So in this video, we're going to investigate when we've got r equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta, so this is a cardioid, we're going to show that the limit as theta tends to pi of dy by dx is equal to 0. Okay, now at theta equals pi, uh, as we will see, um, if we were to substitute that in, uh, we're going to find that we have an indeterminate point. Uh, we're going to get 0 over 0. Okay, so um, the gradient of the curve doesn't really exist there. Um, and so a tangent line doesn't exist there. But what we can do is we can look at, as we get closer and closer to that point, what the gradient tends towards. Okay, so first of all, let's write down what dy by dx is um, when a is 2 and b is 2. Okay, so we're going to have 2 cosine theta take away 2 sine squared theta plus 2 cosine squared theta over minus 2 sine theta take away 4 sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try substituting in theta equals pi. Okay, so dy by dx when theta equals pi, well, cosine of pi is minus 1, okay, so we get minus 2, sine of pi is 0, so that's plus 0, and then we've got two lots of cosine squared of 0. Now, cosine squared of 0 is just going to be 1, so we get plus 2. So in the numerator, we've currently got 0. And the denominator, we've got sine of 0, sorry, sine of pi, which is 0. And we've got sine of pi again, which is 0. So actually, at the point uh, when theta is pi, we get 0 over 0. So um, it's an indeterminate point. Okay, we can't determine anything about it from that. So when we know that that is the case, um, in order to evaluate the limit, what we can use is L'Hopital's rule, okay, which you may or may not have come across at this point. I've got videos on it, of course. Um, so that's what we're going to use. So L'Hopital's rule says that when we've got this indeterminate form, what we can instead do is take a look at differentiating the numerator and the denominator, and then take the limit of that instead. And that limit will have be the same as the limit of this one. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the limit as theta tends to pi of the derivative of 2 cosine theta take away 2 sine squared plus 2 cosine squared in the numerator, and the derivative of that in the denominator. So differentiating the numerator, we're going to get minus 2 sine theta. Then we've got to differentiate this. Now, 2 is going to come down to the front. The derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So we're going to get minus 4 sine theta cosine theta. And differentiating 2 cosine squared, the 2 is going to come down the front. The derivative of cosine is minus sine, so minus 4 sine theta cosine theta. <clears throat> like that. Then the denominator differentiates to minus 2 cosine theta. Then a bit of product rule here. So minus 4 sine theta times the derivative of cosine. So we're going to get plus 4 sine squared theta. And, the derivative, uh, and cosine theta times the derivative of minus 4 sine theta. So minus 4 cosine squared theta. Okay, so as theta tends to pi... We get 0, uh, then 0, and then 0 
in the numerator. In the denominator, we get uh, minus 2 times minus 1, which is 2. We get 4 lots of 0. And we get minus 4 lots of um, 1. So that's minus 4. And so we've got a non-zero term in the denominator now. And so this is equal to 0. So we can see that as this curve, um, as theta tends towards pi, dy by dx um, tends to 0. Now, what's going on with this curve? Now, we're going to look at this curve in more detail in a few videos' time. Okay, But the aim here, the aim of this video, is really to consider that... Um, well, this is what it looks like. It's going to be symmetric, but this is the, a cardioid, okay? Um, and the point is that here, at the origin, at the pole, uh, we have what's referred to as a cusp. Now, with this point, um, we have that r is 0 and theta is pi. Um, now, with the previous video, we saw that it came in a loop, but this one doesn't have a loop. Okay. And the question was, okay, well, and the question I was thinking about was, why does the curve look like this rather than, so let me try drawing it again, why doesn't it look like this? Oh, that's poor. OK. Why must it come in and bounce at a point rather than have a smooth edge there? OK. Now, that was the question I was asking myself. And... This is kind of showing as to why that would be the case. So now you can see that as um, the curve is coming in, the gradient of the curve is tending to zero. So it's tending towards uh, getting flat and parallel to the initial line as it's coming in towards pi. Okay, rather than coming in and then come, becoming infinite at that point, and you've got um, a point where the tangent would have infinite gradient, so it would be perpendicular to the initial line there instead. Uh, we're not finding that. We're seeing that the gradient's coming in at zero. And that kind of helps us to identify as to why the curve looks like this rather than that.